I'm the curator of invertebrate paleontology and geology. I'm a curator of entomology at the Zico South Africa. I'm a collections manager here at Zico Museums. Uh, I am the curator of Cenozoic Paleontology at Zico South African Museum. I have always been associated with the museum. So even though I've been at UCT since 1997, all my research actually has involved material at the museum. So the collections at Ezekiel are world renowned. And this is both in terms of the Permian and Triassic collections as well as the Cenozoic collections. They really are famous all around the world. This here is a sperm whale tooth from five million years ago. And here we have a whale ear bone, which tells us about the type of whale that was living off the coast. And this is a baleen whale. What we can find out from looking at their teeth is what the environment used to be like. Over the lifetime, as it's eating the food, the, the food um, isotopes from the food get incorporated into the tooth enamel, and then uh, we can then drill a little bit off. We only need a little bit of powder, approximately this much, and from that you can get an idea of what the environment was like at that time and how things could change uh, if the climate changes, if vegetation changes, uh, all that kind of information. By taking sediment cores, we can do palynology, looking at soils and pollen and spores to find out what kind of vegetation grew there. By looking at the geology of the land, we can figure out if there was water running there and the sort of topography at the time. And then the paleobiologists can come in and tell us all about the fauna. And it's even more diverse than that when we get into areas of hominids and looking at anthropology and the origin of human life. We've been able to manage quite a few postgraduate projects and co-supervise postgraduate students. And so our students and other researchers, sometimes from abroad even, can come into the collections. They can work on specific fossils or rocks that are comparative to other parts in the world. So our, our breadth and, and our, our spread of, of our collections can actually reach locally and internationally. The collections are very important in providing this historical information that will allow us to maybe predict what could happen in the future. Museum collections are incredibly valuable. In, on a global perspective, there are about 3 billion specimens in museum collections over the world. Uh, in South Africa, there are around 15 million specimens. And this is a fundamental biodiversity resource um, that provides data that feeds into science and society on a, a range of different levels. If we don't have this data, we don't understand what species are present in a system, what they do, how they interact with each other, what ecosystem services they are providing. And if we don't understand that, we can't implement uh, informative and informed conservation management process to look after those species. Ezeka has collections that have been excavated uh, since the early 20th century, over a hundred years. And now we are able to select from that big set of collections the best samples to analyse to try to answer the kinds of questions that we're interested in. And that um, uh, choice of, of sample is really important to be able to do large-scale projects to answer big questions. That if you look at the palosciences, the work that we do there, you know, the archaeology, the work we do there, marine biology, the history of enslavement and slavery, we have been able to make remarkable findings and to make that known to, to members of the public and to do exhibitions together. And that has been the role that we've been, that we've, I mean, the achievement that we've been able to do and also to deliver to members of the public and generally to the scientific community. 